Now, the first time you saw Mr. Perry was on September 8th, 1999, correct? That's correct. You had never seen him before? Never saw him before. Okay. By the way, are you familiar with the American Nursing Association? Yes. They offer certification also, correct? Yes. You don't have that either, do you? No, I do not. Are you familiar with nurse practitioners? Yes. There is a difference between a nurse practitioner and a registered nurse, correct? There is a difference. Nurse practitioners and uh, can prescribe medication under the supervision of a doctor, but can prescribe medication, correct? That's correct. Plaintiff's counsel, objection, putting words in the witness's mouth, if your honor please. The court, overruled, this is cross, proceed. You are not a nurse practitioner? No, I'm not. Now, you recommended a change in withdrawn. You observed the skin on plaintiff's buttocks, scrotum, and left foot, correct? That's correct. Plaintiff's counsel, what date, just so we have it right? Defendant, on September 8th, 1999, I think it's Exhibit G we can go to. You observed on the foot a three by two by one centimeter deep what you termed a stage three ulcer with a pink base? Yes, I did. Okay, when did this examination? Did you look at any other records from any of the previous examinations of the foot in the home from August 31st to September 14th? Did I look at any of the other records? Yes, I don't recall. The court, try to refresh your memory. Defense counsel, thank you very much, Your Honor. Now, well, I can tell you when I go in, I usually just do an examination of what I see. So then if you don't look at the other records, you don't know whether the wound has been increasing in size, decreasing in size, gotten better or worse because you're doing your examination, correct? Can you say that again? The court, that's a logical thing. When you see a wound for the first time, you're eyeing it for the first time. Is that right? That's right. The court, all right, she's seeing it for the first time. So I usually go in and I don't want any pre-existing knowledge of what happened, what was there. I just need to see what I see on the spot. And then I made a joint visit with the nurse. I'm sure she's verbally told me what was occurring with the wound. Is it your testimony that you did a joint visit with Nurse Flame? Yes. And you know who Nurse Flame is? Yes. And you discussed your findings with Nurse Flame at the time? Yes. Would it be surprising to you to know that the records show that you informed her by telephone because she was not there at that time? Ladies counsel, leading and suggestive, if you run a please, the court. The form is bad even though it is cross. No, I don't remember. So she was not there at the time. Now, do you think maybe a nurse's aide was there at the time? A Jane Edwards? I don't recall. Okay, now you saw Slough. Is that correct? The court. What is your question? You saw Slough present? I saw Slough, yes. Okay, please. What is Slough? It's dead tissue. Okay, you didn't see a necrotic eschar there, did you? No, I did not. Because you wanted to prevent a necrotic eschar, is that right? That's correct. The court, had you seen a necrotic eschar, you would have noted it, right? I wrote to prevent. The court, but if you would have seen it, I would have noted it, of course. The court, go ahead, counselor. Now, ma'am, as a registered nurse, not a nurse practitioner, not a doctor, it is your job to execute the medical regimen as prescribed by a licensed physician, correct? Say that again. As a nurse, a registered nurse, yes. Your function in terms of health uh, uh, care generally, and particularly with regard to Mr. Perry on September 8, 1999, was to execute the Medicare or medical regimen prescribed by a licensed physician, correct? No, that's not correct. As a registered nurse, you are taught and trained to question any orders that you may receive from the presiding physician. Okay, so you can question an order and you can execute an order and that's it, correct? You can question an order and execute an order. You can't change an order, correct? No, you can't change an order. You can make recommendations to change an order. Fair enough. The court counsel saved the commentary for later. 
because otherwise you'd be acting outside the purview of what you are as a nurse, correct? I would never write medical orders. I would only make recommendations, obviously. You did not move. Uh, you did more than that here, didn't you? You instructed in using hydrogel and in using a catheter, isn't that true? Catheter is a nursing intervention. You don't need a medical order as a nurse. That's also known as a Texas catheter, correct. That's because it's big, so they termed it after Texas, correct? I have no idea where the name originated. It sounds good. The court, well, you talked a moment ago about nursing discretion. There are certain practices that you have discretion over. So, for example, if you were working in an institution, meaning a hospital, you could go back to the nurse's station and say, why don't we use a larger Foley catheter or a smaller one? And you have the authority to do that, to exercise, without the doctor's pr uh, presence? Absolutely. The court, that's what she's talking about. So when Mr. Perry did not have the Texas catheter on and you instructed the use of a Texas catheter that was within your purview as a nurse? Absolutely. But it never occurred to you that there might have been a reason why the Texas catheter was not in use? Well, it's here for us. 174. 